New developments in the Vince McMahon WWE and John Laurinaitis lawsuit. As accuser, Janelle Grant has agreed to delay the suit at the request of the U.S. Justice Department. This is a breaking and developing news story that we got all of the very little details on right now. Chad Gable, his WWE contract is reportedly set to expire next week and no new deal has been reached and there is outside interest in the former WWE Tag Team Champion. Tony Khan's real feelings towards the ongoing AEW and WBD media rights negotiations have been revealed. Becky Lynch reportedly is set to go on an extended leave, a hiatus, after becoming a free agent with her WWE contract set to expire in the next couple of days. More details on the ongoing WWE and TNA wrestling crossover that we saw this past week on NXT. An update on Julia after undergoing wrist surgery after she broke her wrist during Marigold's debut show. Speaking of contracts and Chad Gable, Natalia, she is still reportedly yet to sign a new WWE contract. Bandido, he's reportedly set to return soon to AW programming after suffering an injury. The backstage reaction to Sexy Red's appearance this past week on NXT has been revealed. And there has been a pitch for William Regal to become an on-screen character once again on WWE NXT. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, uh, plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling and the big developing and breaking news story this afternoon regards former WWE and TKO executive chairman Vince McMahon. The lawsuit filed against him, WWE and John Laurinaitis by former WWE employee Janelle Grant because the lawsuit has been paused. This was a story that was broken by Brandon Thurston on social media of Wrestlenomics as well as Bloomberg they've written the following article about this big development and possibly an indication as to what's to come in the future. They're writing that a former employee of World Wrestling Entertainment has agreed to pause her lawsuit against former boss Vince McMahon at the request of the US Justice Department as the government conducts its own investigation. Now, of course, Janelle Grant sued WWE founder Vince McMahon and another executive, John Laurinaitis, in federal court in Connecticut in January. She alleged that the pair sexually abused her while she worked in wrestling in WWE's legal and talent relations departments. Now, McMahon has denied the claims. He stepped down from his role as the executive chairman of WWE's parent company, Tico Group Holdings, after the suit was filed. Now, this is a quote from Ann Callis, an attorney for Grant, has said, quote, Miss Grant has consented to a request by the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York to stay her case against Mr. McMahon, WWE, and Mr. Laurinaitis pursuant to a pending non-public investigation, end quote. That was, once again, from Ann Callis, an attorney for Grant, who said that in an email statement on Thursday. She continued by saying, quote, we will cooperate with all the appropriate next steps. Now, the stay in question here is for six months, according to a person familiar with the case who asked not to be identified because the terms were not made public. A spokesperson for the U.S. attorney has declined to comment on this matter. Now, this idea of a federal investigation to McMahon isn't really a new thing or anything like that because outlets including ABC News and the Wall Street Journal have previously reported that the U.S. attorney's office for the Southern District of New York is leading an investigation related to sexual misconduct allegations against Vince McMahon. Now, it's unclear if this means there will be criminal charges brought against Vince McMahon. As of this afternoon, a search for McMahon's name doesn't show any new cases in the Southern District of New York's online filing system. Of course, McMahon was served with a search warrant last year of his home. I think that was around July time. So again, this is a developing and breaking news story. If we get any more details on this, we'll let you know. But what are your thoughts on the de developing news that this lawsuit has now been paused and as the U.S. government, the U.S. Justice Department is conducting their own investigation into Vince McMahon. What do you think this means? Where do you think this one is going? Let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section below. Now, a big story today involving a WWE superstar that's been getting a lot of TV time recently, and that is Chad Gable, because a heavily featured talent is seeing their WWE contract possibly expire as soon as next week. According to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, on Wednesday, word within the wrestling industry was that Chad Gable's WWE contract is set to expire late next week, and that no deal has been reached as of now. 
Of course, if Gable reaches free agency, he's expected to get interest from across the industry. WWE has been interested in re-signing him, Fightful have been told. The deal is set to expire next Friday based on the information that Fightful have been given. Now, Fightful have already heard there will be a strong push from talent in various outside companies to vouch for him to be signed when uh, Fightful asked about the possibilities outside of WWE. The 38-year-old Gable has been featured all over WWE television recently. He has been the leader of Alpha Academy as he undergoes a heel turn. He's also been a primary name in the Intercontinental Championship picture dating back for the last several months. He is a three-time WWE Tag Team Champion with various partners. Now, immediately on hearing the news, there were also MMA companies that Fightful spoke to that indicated they would be interested in booking him if the opportunity provided itself. Of course, Gable is a former Olympian. What are your thoughts on this one? Do you think that Chad Gable could possibly leave WWE in the middle of being so heavily featured on WWE programming? Or do you think he signs a new contract and gets a sizable increase in his salary? Let me know your thoughts about that one too. Now, there's been a lot of talk this week about AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery and the media rights negotiations and Tony Khan possibly not being happy with an offer that's on the table from their network partner. Now, AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery are in ongoing negotiations over the media rights for TV programming and its home for the future. Khan has acknowledged that 2024 is a really big year for AEW as this year marks its media renewal year. The AEW owner has praised WBD and the most amazing relationship between companies, noting the importance of Warner Bros. CEO David Zasloff. It was also reported that Zasloff and TNT Sports' Luis Silberwasser both want to retain AEW on TNT and TBS, but Khan himself is, quote, disappointed by the offer currently on the table for his content. Now, in the wake of the disappointed comment, Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer stated that AEW sources claim that Tony Khan was not disappointed, but that neither side have reached an agreement just yet. Meltzer provided further insight into Khan's mindset, particularly over the use of the word disappointed on Wrestling Observer Radio, saying, quote, I was told he wasn't disappointed at all. But at the same time, what does disappointed mean? I mean, it's just a word. You can say he hasn't signed, so it's not the offer he wanted. You can say, well, that's disappointing. You can say that. But the numbers I hear would not be numbers that I would call disappointing. Nothing signed. That's that. The exclusivity period is coming up soon. The end of it is coming up soon. So they can open it up and talk to other people and see what's going on there. Is it going badly right now? I would not call it badly. That would not be a term that I would use at all. People who kind of know are somewhat excited about it. But at the end of the day, when the deal is announced, that will be the story. So Meltzer are pushing back on the idea that Khan is disappointed. What do you see as the outcome here? Do you think AEW sticks with WBD? Or is there a possibility they move elsewhere for more money or less money? Let me know your prediction for that one too. Now, we spoke about contracts earlier on with, obviously, Chad Gable. We're going to be talking later on about Natalia. Becky Lynch, her contract has been a big point of discussion this week. Her contract is set to expire on June 1st, with her final match taking place on the May 27th episode of Monday Night Raw this past Monday. The match, of course, which was the main event of the show, saw Liv Morgan retain the Women's War Championship inside of a steel cage. It was recently reported that Lynch would be taking a hiatus, which she was originally planning to do after WrestleMania before Rhea Ripley's injury led to WWE bringing Lynch back into the fold. More details have now emerged on Lynch's plans, courtesy of Wrestling Observer Radio, with Dave Meltzer stating, quote, Becky Lynch is taking an extended leave. From what I'm told, it's not like a short period of time. She was looking for a long period of time out. It's probably, if he's not on the road, he being Seth Rollins, it makes sense for her not to be on the road, and they can't be hurting for money where they need it right now. And, you know, maybe she's looking for other things, or maybe she's not. She'll be a free agent as of a couple of days from now. So once again, another report suggesting that Lynch is taking a extended leave, a hiatus, and will assess her pro wrestling future in just that that in the future. Now, obviously, many people are still talking about this crossover between WWE and TNA Wrestling. Of course, TNA Knockouts World Champion Jordan Grace appearing on WWE NXT seemingly isn't the end of the Forbidden Door plans with more to come. Grace appeared on the May 28th episode of WWE NXT, setting up a match for the upcoming Battleground Premium Live event. 
This marked her second appearance in WWE, with her first being a surprise entrant in the January 2024 Women's Royal Rumble match. Shawn Michaels, who oversees WWE NXT, reacted to the appearance of Grace, noting his long-standing respect for the TNA wrestler and stating that he's thrilled to have her for Battleground on June 9. With WWE, of course, there's also a working relationship with Rossi Agawa's Marigold, and there has been the suggestion that Kyrie Sane or Io Sky could be heading to Japan for an upcoming show for the promotion. Dave Meltzer has explored the relationship between WWE and both TNA Wrestling and Marigold on Wrestling Observer Radio, saying, quote, There's going to be more of this. It's going to be interesting to see who WWE sends to Marigold and to TNA because they're meant to be working with those two companies. I would presume they will send to TNA somebody for a pay-per-view, probably Slammiversary. Now, when it comes to more details about this, WrestleVotes has tweeted today, saying, quote, While the exact details of the deal are unknown, as they should be, I'm told the partnership between WWE and TNA has been months in the making. WWE loved the feedback and energy from Jordan Grace's Rumble appearance and were eager to use her again opportunely. There are tentative plans for additional superstars to make crossover appearances in due time. Both companies understand that a slow, thoughtful approach is best is the best way forward in the beginning stages. So with that in mind, who do you think is going to cross over? Who do you think is going to cross over from WWE to TNA? And which other names do you think are going to cross over from TNA to WWE? How is it going to be done? Let me know your predictions for that one too. Now, speaking of the working relationship between WWE and Marigold, of course, this kind of also really centers around recent WWE signing Julia, who suffered a wrist injury on the May 20 Marigold debut show that has since required surgery. Julia underwent surgery on May 28th, with Marigold announcing that she would be in attendance for regional shows on June 1st. It was also revealed that WWE wanted Julia to undergo surgery for the injury sustained at the May 20 Marigold Fields Forever show. Julia provided an update on her surgery on May 30, along with a photo that can be seen on the screen right now, saying, Discharge from the hospital. The post would also include a message in Japanese, which Google Translate says reads, quote, I'm out of the hospital. Thank you to everyone who was worried about me. I'm fine. Now, it had been initially reported that WWE was aiming for NXT Heatwave on July 7 as her debut date in a match against current NXT Women's Champion Roxanne Perez. Now, Julia has previously stated that the start date wasn't accurate, according to reports from Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer. Corey Brennan of Fightful, who had reported the initial heatwave date, has provided further insight into the Julia situation, going on to state that she would begin in NXT as an attraction and continue to work for Marigold simultaneously with WWE, at least initially. Now, we spoke about contracts. It's kind of the story going around in wrestling at the moment. It's contracts in, obviously, WWE as well as AEW with contracts expiring. Now, despite having been approached about re-signing with WWE, Natalia has still reportedly not signed a new contract. Her deal with WWE is due to expire imminently, with a report from May 15 stating it was up in a couple of weeks. On May 23rd, it was revealed that Natalia had been approached by WWE regarding a possible contract extension. Dave Meltzer has provided further details on Natalia's status on Wrestling Observer Radio, stating, quote, She hasn't signed a new deal. I don't know if that's anything to be alarmed over or anything like that, but, you know, that's the situation. Now, per the report on May 23rd, it was noted that Natalia was keeping all of her options open and that she had been actively working on projects outside of WWE. So, what do you think happens with Natalia? Do you think she signs a new deal? Do you think she explores options elsewhere? Do you think, like Becky Lynch, she becomes a free agent to see what's out there and go from there? What do you think happens with Natalia? Let me know your thoughts about that one too. Now, Bandida, a bit of an update on the AW star. Have not been seen since June 2023, where he faced Konosuke Takeshita. There is an update on the status of Bandido in AEW. In the AEW Rampage match in question, Bandido suffered a broken wrist, with the first surgery due to take place in July of last year. It was later revealed that Bandido's wrist was still bad, with a second surgery scheduled for December of 2023, with a return penciled in for May 2024. With May 2024 coming to an end, Dave Meltzer has provided an update on Wrestling Observer Radio saying, quote, Bandido should be back right about now. Last I'd heard about him was May, and obviously May is just about over, so I don't know what the situation is with him. Last night, the May 29 AEW Dynamite would have been a good night to debut him in that casino gauntlet because he would have been a big pop. It would have been fantastic. 
Now, Meltzer would go on to reflect upon a possibility that Bandido has been kind of forgotten while he has been away, adding, quote, I don't even know if he's on their radar right now because sometimes the deal is when guys disappear, they're kind of forgotten about in a lot of ways. Now, in June of last year, Conan claimed that Bandido and Roosh had abused their power after they cut ties with Lucha Libre AAA. Bandido made his AEW debut on the September 28, 2022 episode of Dynamite, and he was signed in November of that year. He is a former Ring of Honor World Champion and has also held the Ring of Honor World Six-Man Tag Team Championships in the past, too. Now, this past Tuesday's episode of NXT was significant for a number of reasons, one of which was Sexy Red. Now, over the last year, the rise of Trick Williams in NXT has been something to watch, culminating with his NXT Championship victory in April. Along the way, rapper Sexy Red has been brought on board uh, the Williams craze due to fans chanting lyrics from her song, Shake Your Dreads. After months of anticipation, Red finally made her first WWE appearance on this week's NXT, along with the announcement she'll be hosting NXT Battleground next month. According to a report from Fightful Select, Red's role on NXT is expected to continue past Battleground. As of now, the rapper is slated to have a presence on NXT, similar to that of singer Poppy, who previously made a number of appearances on the brand and released new music coinciding with WWE events. The report also states that Red was easy to work with behind the scenes, and Tuesday's episode was even referred to as Sexy Red is NXT internally. Red opened this week's NXT by unveiling the new Women's North American Championship alongside Ava, with the first winner set to be decided in a ladder match at Battleground. At one point after revealing the title, it looked as though Tatum Paxley might deliver a beatdown to the musical performer, but Meechin quickly made her way to the ring to defend Red. Later in the show, Red appeared once again accompanying Williams and Javon Evans during their main event match against Gallus. The rapper even got involved by preventing Joe Coffey from using the NXT Championship as a weapon, helping Williams and Evans get the victory. Based on the connection created by NXT fans, the working partnership between Red and Williams will likely continue as the rapper keeps making appearances within WWE. And finally, could we see William Regal back on NXT more frequently? Well, William Regal has been back in WWE for almost 18 months at the time of recording, following a stint in All Elite Wrestling in 2022, but has mainly stayed away Away from the spotlight. He returned in January 2023 as the Vice President of Global Talent Development, but his exit from AEW came with a non-compete clause that meant he was unable to appear on television for one whole year. That clause has since expired, and there has been now talks for a new on-screen role for the Englishman. According to Fightful Select, there have been pitches that originally began a few months ago for Regal to be introduced as the new manager of the No Quarter Catch crew, the NXT faction that also includes Regal's real-life son, Charlie Dempsey. Dempsey himself made a comment on the May 28 edition of NXT about crew needing a sense of structure in their rivalry with Tony D'Angelo's family, which has seen D'Angelo capture the NXT Heritage Cup from Dempsey. If Regal were to become a full-time on-screen character, it would be his first major position on television since returning to the company, and his first since being the NXT general manager during the brand's black and gold era. Regal has appeared on screen sporadically since his non-compete clause expired, first appearing in a social media video to announce that Dempsey would be travelling to All Japan Pro Wrestling in January to challenge for the company's Triple Crown Championship. He has since appeared on WWE television to appoint Ava as the new NXT General Manager, congratulate his son on winning the NXT Heritage Cup at NXT Roadblock, and was spotted sitting next to former star and performer Julia when she made an appearance at the NXT Stand and Deliver event over WrestleMania 40 weekend. But there you go, guys. This latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey, guys. Thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.